Welcome back guys. In this video, I will show you how to retouch and color grade an image of a light skinned person inside of Photoshop just like this. I am going to walk you through the whole process step by step, no speed up. So welcome and let's get started. Now all the files and actions I'll be working on will be in the video description. So if you need to follow along, go and download this image and the action that accompany it because we are going to need that action for frequency separation. Download it, import it inside of Photoshop and let's begin. Let's start by duplicating the background because we don't want to work on the original. I will just drag it to this plus icon here to make a copy. And then I will hide the background. There are many tools we can use to remove these dark spots but I'm going to go with the normal spot healing brush tool. Then I will zoom in and as you can see I will just be able to paint on these dark spots here to get rid of them. Now with the healing layer selected, let us run a frequency separation action to separate the low frequencies or the colors and the high frequencies or the textures. You can do that by downloading this action from the video description. Once you have downloaded the action, go to the actions panel. Then click on these buttons right here and then choose load action. Locate the action you have downloaded and click load to import it inside of Photoshop. Once inside Photoshop, you will have this frequency separation action in this folder. You can click this arrow to expand it. Now, if your image is 8-bit, you can select 8-bit frequency separation. And you can also do the same with 16-bit image. By creating this action, I made an auto detect, which means it can automatically detect whether your image is either 16-bit or 8-bit and perform the action that is very necessary in that particular image. So I'm going to choose auto detect and click on this button to apply the action. I'll increase the radius because I tested in this particular image, I'll just take it up to 6.5 to blur away the textures on this particular layer. Then I'll just click OK. The action will go ahead, complete the whole action, separate the low frequency from the high frequencies and also disable the high frequency. Notice that the action automatically picked the mixer brush tool which is the tool that we use in frequency separation most often. If it is not the same with you, select the mixer brush tool from here, then click here to turn this button off. Then leave this button turned on and set the weight size of the brush to 10%. All these other settings should be OK. Now with the low frequency layer selected, I'll reduce the size of the brush. And one thing you really need to be careful here is that if I right click right now, you can see that I have a soft round brush because I'm using the mouse. If for some reason you have a soft round pressure opacity or any of these brushes and you don't have the pen tablet, you might have a different result. And make sure you have the normal soft round brush if you are using the mouse or if you have a tablet then you can go with soft round pressure size brush i'll press enter key to confirm that and then i'll just zoom in the reason i left the high frequency layer here turned on is so that i can be able to see the result as i paint if i turn the layer off i will not be able to mix these colors very well because what we need to do right now is to even out the skin tones and make sure that the textures are still preserved so i'll enable the high frequency again and then make sure the low frequency is selected. Then I'll gradually begin to paint to even out those skin tones. Now I took some time to even out the skin tones. Let us come over here and compare it. This is the before and this is the after. You see that in the after version, the skin tones look more balanced and even. That's what frequency separation is all about. Now if I also zoom into the image, you can see that the textures have been retained because of the high frequency layer right here. Before I create a stamp of everything that is visible, I think that the image is desaturated. There are many ways you can add saturation to your image such as using vibrance or hue saturation. But I'm going to choose hue saturation in this particular section. Then since I want it to affect everything within this particular group, first I'll select the frequency layer and the healing layer right here and group those by pressing Ctrl plus G. Then with the hue saturation selected, I'll hold the Alt key and clip it so that everything within this adjustment layer affects just what is within this group. 
then I will increase the saturation up to 20% like so. Let's see. It looks good. Let's just group everything again to stay organized. Then I will rename this whole group to frequency separation. To create a stamp visible layer of everything that is on the screen, let us press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. I'll just rename it to grating. Make sure the foreground is black and the background is white. Then click on the new adjustment layer icon here and choose gradient map. The gradient map will automatically pick those colors. If you are using a previous version like 2020 version of Photoshop, you might not have a safe try here. So upgrade to 2021 version. To make sure that the gradient map affects just the gradient layer, I'll click on this button to add clipping mask. Then I'll just minimize the panel and change the blending mode of the gradient map from normal to soft light. And we have this look on the screen. Now let's reduce its opacity down to zero and then gradually begin to increase it to a very nice value. 44 looks good, but I'm going to make it 41%. Click on the new adjustment layer one more time and then choose curves adjustment. Clip it, then just select the target hand icon here. Click somewhere on her forehead and just drag it up. By dragging up, we increase the highlight. Come to this portion with the shadow and just click there and drag it down. Not so much. Just be careful. You should aim for an S curve just like this and just minimize the panel. Let us click here again and then let's choose levels. Then I'll also clip it. I'll set the input of the highlight to 166 and set the shadows to 24 to have this intense effect here. Then let's minimize the panel, select the levels max. Then let's invert it by pressing Ctrl plus I. This time, click on the brush group here and choose the normal brush tool. Reduce the flow of the brush to like 6% and set the opacity to 100%. Make sure the foreground is set to white and gradually begin to paint on the lips and the highlight portions to brighten them. Now let's see what difference that makes. This is the levels adjustment with all those paintings. Let's see. This is the before and this is the after. It looks good. The next thing we are going to do which is very important now is to click here on the new adjustment layer icon and choose selective color. Let's clip it and by default the reds are targeted. If not you can always click here and choose red. At this stage I was just playing with these values to have the desired look that I actually wanted for this particular photo. So I'll set the cyan to 34%, press the tab key and set the magenta to minus 15, press the tab key one more time and set the yellows to positive 9, press the tab key the last time and increase the blacks by positive 5 to have this result on the screen. Since the topmost layer here is selected, I'll hold the shift key and click on grating layer. Then simply click on the folder icon to group everything there and I'll rename it to color grating. And this is exactly the look that I wanted in this particular image. Now let's compare the image with the way it was from the beginning. So this is the before and this is the after. So much difference. So you can see that without color grading, our initial retouching will still look flat. Let's see the process one more time. So this was the original image. We added frequency separation after healing to get this result right here. So the step was also very important. After that, we created a stamp visible layer on top to create the image. And we started by adding the gradient map, adding the curves adjustment, which is target adjustment actually, then also global adjustment, which was levels. And after that, we added selective color. And all those effects combined produce this effect on the screen. So this is how you can easily retouch and color create an image inside of Photoshop. This particular tutorial was meant for a light skin image. In my next tutorial, I will show you how to retouch and color create an image for a dark skin image to still retain and maintain the textures. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. If you found it very interesting and helpful, 
please support the channel by subscribing. If you do so, I'll be encouraged to create more videos just like this. Thank you, and I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow. Good luck.